This is the story of the beginning of everything, the creation of the world, and the start of you and me. In the beginning, God created everything, the heavens above and the earth below. Here's what happened. At first, the earth lacked shape and was totally empty, and a dark fog draped over the deep while God's spirit wind hovered over the surface of the empty waters. Then there was the voice of God. God said, Let there be light. And light flashed into being. God saw that the light was beautiful and good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. Evening gave way to morning. That was day one. Then God said, Let there be a vast expanse in the middle of the waters. Let the waters above part from the waters below. So God parted the waters and formed this expanse, separating the waters above from the waters below. It happened just as God said, and God called the vast expanse sky. Evening gave way to morning. That was day two. Then God said, Let the waters below the heavens be collected into one place and congregate into one vast sea, so that dry land may appear. It happened just as God said. God called the dry land earth, and the waters congregated below seas, and God saw that his new creation was beautiful and good. God said, Earth, sprout green vegetation, grow all varieties of seed-bearing plants and all sorts of fruit-bearing trees. It happened just as God said. The earth produced vegetation, seed-bearing plants of all varieties, and fruit-bearing trees of all sorts. And God saw that his new creation was beautiful and good. Evening gave way to morning. That was day three. Then God said, Lights, come out! Shine in the vast expanse of heaven's sky, dividing day from night, to mark the seasons, days, and years. Lights, warm the earth with your light. It happened just as God said. God fashioned the two great lights, the brighter to mark the course of day, the dimmer to mark the course of night, and the divine needled night with the stars. God set them in heaven's sky to cast warm light on the earth, to rule over the day and night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that his new creation was beautiful and good. Evening gave way to morning. That was day four. Then God said, Waters, swarm with fish and sea creatures. Let birds soar high above the earth in the broad expanse of the sky. So God created huge sea creatures, all the swarm of life in the waters, and every kind and species of flying birds, each able to reproduce its own kind. And God saw that his new creation was beautiful and good. And God spoke this blessing over them. Be fruitful and multiply. Let creatures fill the seas. Let birds reproduce and cover the earth. Evening gave way to morning, and that was day five. God said, Earth, generate life. Produce a vast variety of living creatures, domesticated animals, small creeping creatures, and wild animals that roam the earth. It happened just as God said. God made earth creatures in a vast variety of species, wild animals, domesticated animals of all sizes, and small creeping creatures, each able to reproduce its own kind. God saw that his new creation was beautiful and good. And God paused.
Then God said, Now let us conceive a new creation, humanity, made in our image, fashioned according to our likeness, and let us grant them authority over all the earth, the fish in the sea, and the birds in the sky, the domesticated animals, and the small creeping creatures on the earth. So God did just that. He created humanity in His image, created the male and female. Then God blessed them and gave them this directive, Be fruitful and multiply, populate the earth. I make you trustees of my estate, so care for my creation and rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that roams across the earth. And then God said to humanity, Look. I have given you every seed-bearing plant that grows on the earth, and every fruit-bearing tree. They will be your food and nourishment. As for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, and every small creeping creature, everything that breathes the breath of life, I have given them every green plant for food. And it happened just as God said. Then God surveyed everything He had made savoring its beauty and appreciating its goodness. Evening gave way to morning, and that was day six. So now you see how the Creator swept into being the spangled heavens, the earth, and all their hosts in six days. On the seventh day, with the canvas of the cosmos completed, God paused from his labor and rested. Thus God blessed day seven and made it special, an open time for pause and restoration, a sacred zone of Sabbath keeping, because God rested from all the work he had done in creation on that day. This is the detailed story of the eternal God's singular work in creating all that exists. On the day the heavens and earth were created, there were no plants or vegetation to cover the earth. The fields were barren and empty because the eternal God had not sent the rains to nourish the soil or anyone to tend it. In those days, a mist rose up from the ground to blanket the earth, and its vapors irrigated the land. One day, the Eternal God scooped dirt out of the ground, sculpted it into the shape we call human, breathed the breath that gives life into the nostrils of the human, and the human became a living soul. The Eternal God planted a garden in the east of Eden, a place of utter delight, and placed the man whom he had sculpted there. In this garden, he made the ground pregnant with life, bursting forth with nourishing food and luxuriant beauty. He created trees, and in the center of the Garden of Delights stood the Tree of Life and the Tree of the Knowledge of Good and Evil. A river flowed from Eden to irrigate the garden, and from there it separated into four smaller rivers. The first, the Pishon, flows around the land of Havilah, a rich land plentiful in gold of premium quality, bdellium and onyx stones. The second, the Gihon, flows around the entire land of Cush. The third, the Tigris, flows east of Assyria, and the fourth is the Euphrates. 
The Eternal God placed the newly made man in the Garden of Eden in order to work the ground and care for it. He made certain demands of the man regarding life in the garden. God said, Eat freely from any and all trees in the garden. I only require that you abstain from eating the fruit of one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Beware, the day you eat the fruit of this tree, you will certainly die. It is not good for the man to be alone, so I will create a companion for him, a perfectly suited partner. So, out of the same ground the man was made from, the eternal God sculpted every sort of animal and every kind of bird that flies up in the sky. Then he brought them to the man and gave him the authority to name each creature as he saw fit. Whatever he decided to call it, that became its name. Thus, the man chose names for domesticated animals, birds, and wild beasts. But none of these creatures was a right and proper partner for Adam. So, the eternal God put him into a deep sleep and removed a rib from his side and closed the flesh around the opening. He formed a woman from the rib taken out of the man and presented her to him. Adam said, At last, a suitable companion, a perfect partner, bone from my bones, flesh from my flesh. I will call this one woman as an internal reminder that she was taken out of man. Now this is the reason that a man leaves his father and mother and is united with his wife, and the two become one flesh. In those days the man and his wife were both naked, and they were not ashamed.